Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today, Windows 7 has reached end of life. What does that mean? Well, the first thing that that's going to mean is that it doesn't mean that Windows 7 is automatically, you've got to shut down your computer and not use them. It just means that today is the last batch of security updates. Now, ultimately that means that from this time forward, you are not going to be getting the security patches that we will need to keep the system incrementally up to date. Now, does that mean you immediately have to stop using it today? No. Doesn't mean you have to stop using it this month. Probably not. There, it is not radically dangerous to keep using it right now, unless there is a huge major security vulnerability that comes out. But to be perfectly candid, if there is a huge major security vulnerabilities, Microsoft is probably going to patch it. Remember WannaCry? They pushed out a patch for XP for the first time in like 10 years. Because as of the statistics the other day, 39% of computers are still on Windows 7. Most people are not just going to throw away their system, go out and buy a new one, or push the upgrade button. Most users are going to keep on going. Now, I also saw another interesting report that, that uh, Google Chrome is going to continue supporting Windows 7 for at least 18 months. Now, what does it mean that your computer does not have security updates? Your biggest vulnerability is going to be the internet. Getting online, getting on the internet. Now, is Firefox going to continue to support Windows 7? Probably. I haven't seen an official report about it, but probably. So what's going to happen is the most dangerous place for you to be on Windows 7, not this second because security patches are still going out today, it's just end of life, but in the coming months is websites could take advantage of known security vulnerabilities. They could. Okay, so with that, if you are being safe on the internet, you're not clicking weird and random links, you're using an up-to-date browser, you are going to be reasonably safe for the average person. It also means, though, you have to be careful with your email. Do not, and you shouldn't do this even with a patched Windows 10, don't open strange, weird, unexpected attachments in email. That is another huge attack vector. The attack vectors that are most dangerous, like the WannaCry, those are called worms. A worm is different from a typical virus in that a worm, the, the reason is it's, it worms its way around the internet. It tests and pokes and probes at weaknesses. Now, even if you had the vulnerability in your Windows computer that WannaCry would have attacked, if you had a firewall that would prevent that probe, you are still safe. So that means if you are still connecting to the internet and you put your computer behind a good, strong, safe firewall, you're also safe for a while. There's no serious emergency to jump right now. It's just something to keep in mind. But you should have in the back of your mind a plan because it is going to be soon that Windows 7, you're not going to want to be on for a lot of work. So what are your options? Well, option number one, the option Microsoft really wants you to do, switch to Windows 10. Now, I did a comparative video and I'm actually repatching it and I'm going to, I'll probably release it out and see if people think we should replace this, the, the old one with the new one. I'll probably throw it on the Discord server. So if you're on Discord, you'll be able to see it. I'll list it as a private video for now. Solicit some feedback, see what people say about it. Um, but with that, I, I wanted to give a little bit more of a fair approach on Windows and give reasons why you want to continue to use it. So let's just go ahead and summarize those reasons now. Why might you switch to Windows 10? Well, number one, you are in an industry or an enterprise that requires it. I have a cousin that works in financial advising. The software they use absolutely has to have Windows 10. It won't even run on a Mac. It won't run on Linux. It won't run on Windows 7. It runs on Windows 10, period. 
okay? So you might be in that industry. You might be an industry that does require you to run a certain software package. You might have to. We're not talking, oh, I have to because I edit photos. We're talking, I have to because my work dictates I have to use Photoshop exclusively. You gotta stay on Windows. Or you could do Mac in that case as well. But if you're like, well, I edit images, so I have to stay on Windows. No, you don't. GIMP is every bit as good as Photoshop. You just don't know how to use it. Learn it. You need to make those decisions for yourself. Don't ask, can I run this program? Ask, can I get this task done? The answer may be on Linux. It may not be. You might have to stick with Windows because of that. Now, the next option is if you are a AAA title gamer, you're not going to have as good of an experience on Linux, even though, yes, Lutris is coming along, yes, Steam is coming along, Wine is coming along, but still you're going to have a better experience natively. Now, bless you guys in the community who do this approach, Linux for everything personal, Windows for the gaming. That is my recommendation. If you got to have those, hey, no shame in that. We got to have our fun, we got to have our entertainment, we got to have our enjoyment, and if gaming is your thing, hey, keep that Windows machine around for the purpose of playing your games. But when it comes to getting on the internet and doing all the other types of things, hey, Linux, better option. Brings us to our next thing to do. What else can you do? Well, you can switch to Linux, and in switching to Linux, you can start looking for how you accomplish all of those individual tasks on the Linux operating system, and you can. I'm not a backdoor computer hobbyist that just sees if I can get stuff running on Linux. I actually run two separate productivity businesses on Linux. You don't have to have the paid software to do these things, okay? You have those options. Now, another option you have, hey, you could just, we already talked about continuing to run Windows 7 for a while. You could switch to Windows 8. It's going to have it, at least give you another year or so of support. I forget exactly how long Windows 8 is going to be supported for, but you have another year or so. Just upgrade to Windows 8. Uh, 8.1, it's still a fine operating system. In fact, Windows 8.1, it's these, the start menu is more annoying, but most of the rest of it is very similar to Windows 7. You could get used to that. Another option is uh, Chris Titus did a video not long ago looking at uh, one of these, uh, the Microsoft servers, which is basically an enterprise server edition of Windows 7 that you can put a Windows 7 GUI on. And I forget how long that's supported for. I think that'll give you another couple of years. So the ultimate point here is that you do have options. Okay, You don't have to abandon Windows 7 today. You don't even have to abandon Windows 7 this month. You're probably safe, for the most part, for about another six months reasonably well. Possibly more if you have a really good firewall or if you are a very cautious computer user. However, Windows 7 is going to become dangerous to run. And so you have to come up with your exit strategy. If you do not have your exit strategy from Windows 7, it is critical you start thinking about it now, possible solutions, switch to Linux, go to Windows 8.1 to keep basically Windows 7 for another year or so, switch to the server, switch to Windows 10. No shame in that. You can also switch to Mac as well uh, if you like the UI. I, I don't like the UI in Mac. That's why I don't do it. Uh, so those are kind of the options. There are, there are things you need to do, but don't buy into the FUD right now that, oh, Windows is out of date. No, I got to get rid of Windows 7 today. No, you don't. Even despite the giant Windows full screen nag screens you're going to start seeing on Windows 7 today, don't worry about it. Just click remind me later or click don't remind me later or whatever else, but start working on your exit strategy. When I started this channel, it's almost been three and a half, four years now. When I started this channel, okay, it was my exit strategy. I started this channel as a Linux newbie with the explicit purpose of to have an exit strategy for this day when Windows 7 ends. And I'm very, very happy with my jump to Linux because what I didn't recognize at the time is that my jump to Linux made me far more productive. 
I would never have known about the productivity power in Linux if Windows did not pull its stuff and start becoming crazy spyware. So thanks Microsoft for showing me a better option in Linux. And I hope that you also will take the time to learn Linux. Even if you can't switch to it, at least consider it in one of your options now that your Windows 7 has potentially installed its last updates. So let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments down below.